On the June 29th, 1982 broadcast of the Afternoon Exchange on WEWS in Cleveland, Ohio, two members of the waitresses, Chris Butler and Patty Donahue, appeared before their gig at the Agora that evening. The band was riding the wave of their success of their first album, video from it, I Know What Boys Like, was getting heavy play on MTV, and that song had had gotten the band their deal. Uh, Don, Donahue and but Chris Butler and uh, Ralph Carney, Butler's bandmate in Tin Huey, made a demo of the song. And Butler took it to New York and shopped it around. Stiff Records put out a few tracks on their Akron compilation. And uh, the song I Know What Boys Like got released on ZE Records as a single. It didn't chart, but it did well enough to get them a deal with Polydor for a whole album, so they had to put together a band. And if you could choose a drummer for an alternative, new wavy kind of band, why not go to one of the sources, television? Billy Ficka playing drums for the waitresses. But one of the other stars of The Waitresses was Tracy Wormworth, who has gone on to probably the most successful career out of all the musicians in The Waitresses. And she's played on One Hit Wonder Desiree's massive hit, to Lena Horne, David Lee Roth, and a ton, a ton of albums and songs with the B-52s. And so she's she's really uh, probably succeeded better than any of them. And Butler goes all the way back in Cleveland rock and roll history to being in what, what some have called the first interracial rock band in Cleveland, The Disciples. And The Disciples were an Orange High School band, probably about four miles from where I stand at this moment. The waitresses are timeless, especially every Christmas season. That Christmas wrapping kind of knocked them out of the category of one hit wonder for I Know What Boys Like. It, it will go on to be the most enduring song and work that the waitresses has ever did. People will hear that year after year after year. You might have to watch like some kind of pop-up retro show to see the wonderful video for I Know What Boys Like. And that was such a fun, fun, fun song. And the Waitresses were a great band and made Cleveland proud and Northeast Ohio proud. So check out this cool interview with uh, Chris and Patty from the Waitresses and two Cleveland news legends, Wilma Smith and Fred Griffith on the Afternoon Exchange, June 29th, 1982. <laughs> and and it, it is a group that is uh, causing the entire uh, rock and roll establishment to be talking about their work. Thank That's you right. for coming. That's true. It's nice to have you here. And with us are Patty Donahue, who is the lead singer, and uh, Chris Butler, who does a lot of the writing. That's right. And the writing is what people are talking about. Uh, sure. Is there any way that <laughs> they're talking about everything? Of course, Patty. But, I mean, the, the material you're doing seems to be different. It seems right. to be romantic. It seems to have to do with <coughs> falling in love and being hurt, falling out of love. That's right. It's real human-oriented. It's real, um, not necessarily crisis, but definitely a, a slice of life kind of things. And as, as opposed to popular music, which is so mm -hmm. much escapism and, uh, you know, the usual cliches of, uh, well, sex, drugs, whatever. This death is much doom. more death, do more destruction. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Another part of your success that is enjoyable to all of us is that you're from Cleveland, and it's nice to see hometown people do well. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Really, it is. And we should say too, you you were from the west side, you were from the east side. That's you were right. telling me in the beginning, and you you really were waitresses and waiters. Oh yeah, sure. Six years. And what what restaurant dare you say? Um, I don't know if they're still in existence. Um, 
Rain Tree County in Sugar Falls. Of course. Well, that's still there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what about for you? Boy, about a hundred of them. You know, brown <laughs> derbies, Parazon, Italian restaurants. What Coliseum. makes you not want to turn in your liners to the tables again? Isn't that what they're called? The plates oh, on them? Is that what they're called, liners? Well, and anyway, know. why would you not want to have liners anymore and suddenly have something that's bigger in the form of a record? What, what was the change over there? Anything to get out of the restaurant really? business. I, was, I escaped myself. <laughs> I know. Did after, just after, did it for the money. I did it for 13 <laughs> years, and that was enough. It, it ain't easy, is it? No, no sir. No, no, sir. Well, now, where did the music come from? Was that was that something that was in your background as a little kid? Oh, sure. My grandparents tell me stories about how I kept them awake, banging on pots and pans, and my mother teaches piano in Sugar Falls, and this is a pretty standard kind of kind of a background with that. And uh, well, I have to mention the media here in Cleveland. I mean, there's Don Webster over there who I used to watch on uh, the Big Five show, and uh, that's really going to date me. But. <laughs> he was, Don was very, very young then, however. Oh. Right? Don was 12. Don, Don was 12? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Patty, what was your situation? Uh, what did you watch when you were a kid? What music were you listening to, and when did you start to sing? Um, well, actually, I started singing about a year and a half ago when I joined this band. Is that but, uh, right? Uh-huh. I was, this is my first band. But we used to do work on tapes together uh -huh. since about 78. You know, I, my mother was always played records. Top 40 when I was growing up, I suppose. What does your mother think now? Oh, <laughs> mom. <laughs> <laughs> she, she really enjoys it, you know. You know, she likes it. She doesn't worry about her daughter being with a band and traveling. Well, well she wanted me to get married and <laughs> settle in Cleveland, you know, parents. But she, you know, she enjoys it. She comes to our shows. Mm -hmm. Patty, are you in this picture? Yes, that's me in the middle. St. Joseph Academy. This was the graduation picture of St. <laughs> Joseph Academy. It's on the cover of the album. That's the album. Yeah. Ah, very nice. Class of 74. Uh -huh. Now, your uh, notices have been awfully good. Have you been surprised at the uh, attention that you've drawn from the media critics of the Rolling Stone and the New York Times? Oh, sure. I mean, that's... That was really nice. I mean, when you start something like this, it's it's really risky because it's a very competitive business, as you know, like your own, and um, you just kind of go for it and uh, do the best you can. And the response has really been really been well. We were going to try to play a little squiggle yes, of we a videotape, yeah. but alas, some technical thing kept us from doing it. But yeah. we can tell everyone that you'll be at the Agora tonight. Right. So mm -hmm. people have to come down and mm -hmm. see it. Yes, the waitresses at the Agora, and I guess the doors probably will be opening around 7.30 or so, and uh, find out what this uh, homegrown group, which has got everybody in music talking these days, are all about. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. on your success. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Harrison Ford is going to be with us. There's another star. Right after this. <laughs> Yes, of the morning and afternoon exchange, stay at the elegant Stouffer's Inn on the Square.